So, for Martin Luther King Day, I thought I'd just do a video about privilege. You see, um, Dr. King is, although, although he's most remembered for his uh, fight against segregation, his dream was a lot more deep and complex than that. Because he saw uh, the institutions of racism, poverty, and militarism all tied together. And so, in that spirit, I think we need to look at some of the deeper social structures of oppression uh, rather than rather than simple, simply outright prejudice, because see, privilege is much more subtle than prejudice. Prejudice is kind of the outright hatred of some group, um, you know, based on some superficial thing about them. Privilege is it isn't about what you think; it's what you're oblivious to. Privilege is a kind of blinder. That, uh, that is put upon you so that you don't see the deeper structures of um, the point from which you're looking out. Um, so, I, so I think you know, the two main forms of privilege that uh, we have in our society, and there are many others uh, that can be discussed, are um, white privilege and male privilege. So, uh, and, and I think that both these are actually they can actually be a sort of divide and conquer strategy for the uh, economic elite, uh, and and they have a long history together. So if you go into uh, you know old colonial times, uh, that there, there were you know they had African slaves and they also had uh, European indentured servants, and both of them were uh, you know they they were both pretty much you know during their during the time that they that they had to serve their master, they were pretty much on equal footing. Uh, the difference being, of course, that the indentured servants were there for a period of seven to ten years, whereas the African slaves were owned, you know, for life. So it was so there was that difference. But yeah, the, the indentured servants were sold from one owner to another, just like you know, the, just like slaves were. And um, there was a fear that they would band together and. Uh, yeah, and and rise against their uh, their masters. Yeah, you know, and, and in fact, yeah, they did uh, interact pretty much as equals. You know, while they while they were held under. And so, what they what they need to do was actually create the myth of whiteness. You see, there was a time when there were no white people. There were, you know, English people and Scottish people and French and German and Dutch. You know, but then the they created this myth of race where there were black people and white people instead, uh, and uh, you know, and and this helped create a sense of separation. And you know, laws were passed that ensured that um, indentured servants were entitled to a certain compensation at the end of their service, so that uh, they would have uh, something, some stake in not siding with the African slaves, and uh, it gives them something to. Uh, you know, to hold on to. Uh, of course, it was not enough to rise above their class, and um, you know, very, uh, very few indentured servants ever, you know, became, you know, economically dominant. They they still maintain they still uh, were the underclass of their society, uh, but they could at least say that they weren't black. They were, you know, they were white, and that and that gave them some privilege in society. Um, and you know, within among the black slaves, there was uh, you know the house slaves and field slaves, and that created, creates the the sort of privilege that uh, the ensues the kind of fracture uh, fracturing of the society. Uh, and I think we see this today somewhat in the uh, battle over immigration. You know, the sort of white working class has been taught to blame uh, immigrants, particularly illegal immigrants, on you know on you know the job losses. That you know the whole they took our jobs, you know, <laughs> you know but uh, but you know, never thinking to actually point the finger at the capitalists who are offshoring jobs and um, you know often the same ones who are hiring the illegal immigrants. But um, and the point, you know, of course, never uh, imagining the possibility that the working class could actually unite and uh, control the means of production themselves. Um, so that's a little bit about white privilege. Uh, there was also patriarchy, and I'm not going to go into the whole Onisian drama. I think pretty much everything that needs to be said about that has been said. But uh, I did have a recent debate with a guy named 
going by the the name Mr. 1001 Knights, who uh, is an anarchist here on YouTube, that's why I subscribe to his channel, but uh, he has this crusade to kind of disprove the existence of patriarchy uh, by, you know, he, he recently talked about um, uh, males being more likely to suffer work-related injuries and death, um, and uh, the fact that uh, he has this bizarre notion that women feel like men aren't entitled to a good woman, whereas, whereas women have a right to a good man. I, I, I don't even know where he's coming from with that. But but it, but anyway, I, I want to point out that uh, patriarchy is not unambiguously good for men. Um, because when you're in the dominant group, you are judged by how dominant you are. And so we have the kind of alpha versus beta male idea. And I, I mentioned in a previous video that... Uh, it just says women are turned into sex objects, men are turned into success objects. And, you know, consider, uh, you know, they're considered more lovable if they score the touchdown or if they get the promotion or, you know, gain political power or something like that. that they're, they're judged by um, how dominant they can be in that society. Whereas, um, whereas women are judged by how attractive they can be as, as a as a passive object, as one who who is uh, by uh, what they can be for the man. So, uh, you know, in in both cases, that that's a that puts both men and women in uh, in in a position that uh, neither of them would necessarily want. You know, it it benefits a small few, and you know, there are women who benefit from patriarchy. Some you know, some women can use their looks to get you know to get ahead and. You know, get a rich husband and things like that. So there, so it does work out for them uh, too. But the point is, uh, this position of male privilege that we call patriarchy um, creates these gender norms that actually end up working against most people uh, anyway. And uh, you know, one place where you can see privilege most distinctly is in the media. Um, Basically, what you find generally is that, uh, and, and there are exceptions to this, but white male is considered the default, and anything else is considered a deviation from the default. Um, when there's a female main character in uh, in a story, then it, that uh, that genre is considered to be appealing to a female audience, whereas if it's a male main character, it's considered as appealing to a general audience, so that men and women would like it. Now there are exceptions to this. I think you know, Ally McBeal was you know, pretty popular among men and women alike. You know, but generally speaking, uh, it's there's an assumption that men aren't interested in a female main character, unless you know, except as a sex object. So that's um, you know, so so that's kind of uh, where you see uh, privilege um, coming out most clearly. Um, and see, and, and I think there, it, it's not simply the media's fault for that. I think that that actually, um, it's because the subordinate group can relate to the privileged group more than the privileged group can relate to the subordinate group, um, because uh, the being um, being in the privileged group means you can't see beyond the privilege, but being being in the subordinate group means you can means you you understand your own position in relation to the privileged group and you know it's kind of they have greater understanding and if you look at the etymology of the, of the word understand it literally means to stand under to stand under the the dominant group is to see from their perspective and so whereas being in the privileged group means that you can never fully see beyond your privilege um, at least not on your own and so that's why it's important as a member of the privileged group to listen, and um, yeah, and, and not to uh, sort of preach, but but to sit down and uh, hear the perspectives of of those coming from the other group. So uh, that's it for now. Peace.